Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the magnificent map of map making. Oh, oh dear, I don't know where my voice was going then, do apologize. So it's been a while since I've done a tutorial, and here is an overdue one. Projectile weapons for StarCraft 2. So this one's a bit more complicated than the others I've done, so if you've not done my other tutorials, or you're not familiar with data and how weapons connect to effects and how actors connect to units, I'd recommend you go and look at my other tutorials, then return here and you'll have a bit more of an understanding of what we're doing. If you can't be bothered to do that, I will be doing it at a slow pace, step by step, so you should end up with something that functions even if you don't know what you're actually doing, as long as you copy me. So, swings and roundabouts, whichever you prefer. We're going to start by creating the model of the projectile. Now, if your project's quite small and you want to just get a single thing working and you're not planning on using default units and so on and so forth, you can, of course, just select a model that already exists. But if you want to keep the other things in the game functioning and looking like they are already, and you'd want to maybe change the scale or the color or a few details about the model by using the um, actor settings and such, and well, and the model settings, you're going to want to create a new model. So that's what we're going to do because I'm going to be uh, manipulating the probe slightly. I am making a probe cannon, which is why. This would be called probe cannon weapon, because this is the weapon, not the actual probe cannon. The model type is generic, and its parent is going to be a missile FX. And we're just going to copy this from the photon cannon weapon. We're going to be using the photon cannon weapon and the photon cannon's attack as the standard for everything here, because it's a very simple weapon. It's a orb that travels from the firer to the target in a straight line with an effect at both ends. And that's exactly what we're going to want for our weapon. In the newer versions of StarCraft, there's fewer units you can use that have simple projectile weapons, uh, seen as some have well, alternate firing like the Marauder, well, which actually now it doesn't alternate anymore, does it? It fires two at once, so it's a bit different. Um, you'd have a Your launch event would be quite different and actually continue to a second event similar to how a reaper attacks. That's that's something for later. <laughs> we do one thing at a time. Right, we're next going to create the unit that is the projectile. And this is going to be the probe cannon. Weapon again, but we're in the unit tab. And it's generic. The parent for this is fine. The object type needs to be set to projectile. And I'm going to put the race to Protoss. And once again, we're going to copy this from the Photon Can because we're going down a similar path with how our weapon behaves. There we are, so we've always got the, already got the mover. I'll mess with that later because that's more of a visual and fun thing than a functional thing, though it is necessary. Um, next. Sorry, just looking at. I've I ha this is the first tutorial I've done where I've had to write notes just because even I, I forget all these steps. It's quite convoluted for what we're making, but once you've done it once, hopefully you'll get used to it. And then uh, it's not something I do very often either, actually. But we'll see. I should do it more. I've done a few. Rambling is not. I should save my rambling for my streams actually instead of my tutorials. I do apologise. We're next going to create the actor for the projectile. So this is going to be the probe cannon attack missile. And this is not an action. This is a missile. It's a generic attack missile. It's not a doodad. And we're going to copy again from the photon cannon. Now the difference when we boot this up is we're now going to start connecting stuff together. Once it loads. So we're now going to change the token unit name to the unit we have created that is our attack projectile. There he is. So they're now connected. Next we're going to start creating the weapon effects and the weapon effects will connect to each other and then once we have the weapon it will connect to a single effect which will connect to both and the actors will also connect to the effects. So we're going to start with the effects, uh, which I don't have a tab for at the moment. Or did I? No, I didn't. Right. So we're in effects now. And 
we're going to add a new effect. And this is going to be our probe cannon damage effect. This will be the actual damage that the cannon does. This is not an applied behavior, this is a damage. It's a normal damage. And we're going to, once again, copy from the photon cannon. So another thing copying does, as you'll see here, with what we've been given because we've copied the Photon Cannon is all the basic things you're going to want. If you do create a brand new unit, you've, you need to be a bit more familiar with the data editor and fields that you're going to want to fill, to fill and flags you're going to want to tick. Um, without, like, as in a quick example, these response flags, if you don't have these, you can have some quite unique behaviors where units are very happy to sit and be shot. If you've played enough games of StarCraft, you know that when you're getting shot by cloaked units, if the units know they can't retaliate, and they can't see their target, they instead just kind of run around a bit instead of standing there and accepting their fate, which I think we're going to want. Um, just for reasons, let's put the damage to 35. I mean, you've been hit in the face with a probe, it's, it's going to hurt. And that's all for damage. We're now going to create another effect, and this is the effect that actually creates the missile. And so, yep, program, and then launch missile in brackets here. So obviously you can be calling the things in your product, in your product, in your map, whatever you like. But I do advise using the the same formatting as the stuff already in the editor. And that means when you look at your work compared to work already in the editor, you can see how things connect and how things match up. If you go through naming stuff randomly or naming stuff maybe a bit more vaguely, then you can end up coming back to fix things and being quite confused how everything connects if everything's got a very similar name. So as also I make, in my own projects, I make good use of the um, suffix and the prefixes because you can just jot on the end of something that this is a weapon or this is a projectile, so on and so forth. Good for your own organization. Similar to how you put OBJ and SPR in front of sprites and objects in Game Maker, just for organization. So this is a this is not a damage, this is a launch missile. And the parent is gonna be default. It is. And once again we're gonna copy this from the photon cannon. Excellent. And while we're in here, we're going to change to the damage that we made previous instead of the phase cannon damage. Typing in probe would have been faster. Probe cannon damage. And this is our probe. And we've. Oh, I've, oh sorry, I've put my steps in slight wrong order. We'll have to come. Oh, no, I've not, sorry. Fool. This is correct. We're now changing the unit, aka projectile, to the unit we created earlier. I was assuming, I thought for some reason that was asking me for the weapon, but that's not true. Excellent. Next, we're going to go and create an actor, which will hold the effect and the launch missile together. And also, when they're connected to the weapon, we'll make sure that all functions as expected. So we're going to create a new actor. I may have already made one in my practice run. <laughs> so this can be probe, probe cannon. Attack. Yeah, I'm confusing myself in the slightly now, sorry. No, it's not. That's yeah, I've deleted what I need to delete. So anyway. Right. So this the attack is an action, it's a generic attack, and once again we're gonna copy from the photon cannon. If you've not got a unit that's similar, I think the photon cannon, the stalker, um slightly the cyclones attack. And if else with a projectile. Hydralisks and roaches of basic attacks that you can copy from just to get a rough setup in your data editor. Oh, not responding. We should be back in just a moment. There we are. We're back. So now we have our probe cannon attack actor. We can connect it to our launch and our damage effects. There we are. 
Right, and finally, funny enough, one of the final steps is to create the actual weapon. <laughs> now, the weapon, the main thing the weapon decides is your range and the fire rate. Obviously, the damage is set up in the the damage effect, and the projectile speed is set in the unit, I believe. I've not actually messed with that, so I shouldn't say things like that, should I? Anyway, this is the probe cannon. We're making a weapon, and it's default, and we're going to go back to photon cannon again. So instead now we're going to change the effect when the weapon happens to our launch missile. Now the display effect, we're going to want to our damage because we don't want to show the damage from another unit. There we are. And I'm just going to slow down the fire rate a bit because we're firing entire probes. The range is fine. I think we have nearly everything. I'm doubting myself slightly, but I'm now going to give the probe cannon to our Mad Marines from years ago. This happens here because it's quicker. He says, Just let my CPU wake up. Thank you. And we're going to remove the mad cannon from the mad marines, and they can instead fire probes. It's probably a bit madder than the mad gun. My gun. Right. Now I'm going to test this document. Hopefully, my capture software follows me. If it doesn't, I'm going to end the video here and tell you that it should work. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll be starting all over again. Just loading up. I made a simple mistake. The mistake I made is I did not modify the model when we created the model. Hopefully you're still with me. So that's function now. The sounds and such are quite easy to find, um, but I might do a little tutorial on that at some point. I am um, a silly. The firing probes. It works. <laughs> It works. If this recording has worked, is another matter entirely. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the bit of a sketchy end there. 
but I'd just like to say I'm back and open to suggestions and questions. If they're video worthy, they will be in a video. The best way now to request help with the editor is in the comments. I've got the new Curator app, so I, I kind of get comments. Well, actually, I get comments better than I receive PMs and emails because I can check them on the go and I can reply to them on the go if I've got the information I need in my head. Let's try that again. Thank you very much for watching and I shall catch you guys for the next one. But just a quick finishing note that if you have any questions or any requests, do let them be known via comments. I do not check my YouTube PMs because they're a pain to get to. Um, I check my emails not as often as I should, but comments now are sent straight to my tablet, which I have on me on a daily basis. So I'll be able to reply and see what you guys are saying straight away. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.